Hi there, this is Ms. Rick Felder coming to you with the LCM GCF What Would You Do video. We're still working here on standard 6.NS.4, so that's the standard about the least common multiple, greatest common factor, and the distributive property and how they all work together. So the first thing that we're going to look at here, I've got um, my little question here in pink or my statement. Now you know how to find the LCM and GCF, the least common multiple and greatest common factor. But will you know which one to find when you read a word problem? So in all actuality, the truth of the matter is, this is the hard part for students. Because we can teach you how to do the different methods and factoring and the latter and all of those other good things. But if when you find, um, if when you read a word problem, you don't know which one to use, that doesn't really help you a whole lot. So now, well, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, that's what I had at the bottom there. So now we're going to look at our problem-solving strategy. So we can solve any word problem with three questions. So the three questions that we always need to ask ourselves, and you don't need to be writing any of this down just yet, but the three questions we need to ask ourselves are going to be, what do I know? What do I need to find out? And what is my plan? So you don't have to write this down, but this is going to repeat, be repeated over and over and over in my class. So let's look at um, a couple things that you need to do. Up in the top left corner, you can see that it says write this down, but I don't want you to pause the video just yet. I want you to think about the types of problems that you're going to be looking for that are going to be involving or asking you for least common multiple. So least common multiple problems may be asking you about an event that is or will be repeating over and over. Now you want to pay close attention in this video because now that we've got this flipped mastery classroom, you want to keep in mind that this video is super important because it's going to prepare you for the activity that you're about to do here in class. So you want to make sure that you're listening so that you know how to work together in your groups. So again, LCM problems or problems asking you for the least common multiple are going to be asking you um, sometimes about an event that is or will be repeating over and over. It will also ask you, um, problems will ask you to purchase or get multiple items in order to have enough and also to figure out when something will happen again at the same time. So now I'd like you to go ahead and pause the video and just really quickly, I want you to write down these three types of problems that you'll see for LCM. There's not going to be a whole lot of writing here. I just want you to make sure that you have sort of um, a comparison. So you want to write these down. Great, now you should have written down LCM problems and then the three bullets that you have here. The next thing that we're gonna do is look at a problem. You do not need to write this problem down. This problem is just one that we're gonna talk through, so you just need to listen. The least common multiple example is this. Ben exercises every 12 days and Isabel exercised, I'm sorry, and Isabel every eight days. Ben and Isabel both exercised today. How many days would it be until they exercise together again? So really quickly, let's go ahead and go back. So we're gonna look and remember our question said, when will they exercise again? So which one does that follow under? The first bullet, the second bullet, or the third? Now it's not always gonna be like this, but a lot of times you're going to have these three types of scenarios. So if you answered the third, then that's correct. It says to figure out when something will happen again at the same time. So let's go ahead and look and answer our three questions. Our three questions are, what do I know? So what I know here is that Ben exercises every 12 days and Isabel every eight days. What do I need to know? This is the part where a lot of people make mistakes. So you wanna make sure that you're solving the problem that they're asking you to solve. So what do I need to know? How many days until they both exercise on the same day again? And now what is my plan? Now, since we've already identified that this is a least common multiple plan, it says we need to find um, the, this problem can be solved using least common multiple because we're trying to figure out when the soonest, that's least, time will be that um, will be that as the event of exercising continues, multiple, it will occur at the same time, common. Remember that's shared. So we're going to find the least common multiple of 8 and 12. Really briefly, I'm just going to show you the latter method for 8 and 12 to find the least common multiple. So the first thing that you need to do, um, I'm going to, like I said, use the ladder method. So I'm going to write 8 and 12 on the same line together. And then I'm going to write my upside down L for ladder. Now I'm going to take out my smallest prime number. Remember, that's how we did that. So we're going to take out 2. So now we find out that 2 goes into 8 4 times. So we're going to write a 4 here. And 2 goes into 12 6 times. So we're going to write a 6 here. Then we're gonna do another L for the ladder method because we have not got all prime numbers yet. And now we're gonna take out another two. So two goes into four two times. 
Oops, did I make that? And two goes into six three times. So now we have, you can see that we have all prime numbers here, two, 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 and three. So since this is a least common multiple problem, you wanna make sure that you remember that you're going to circle it as a bubble L because we're finding the least common multiple. So as you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and make an L right here and I'm gonna L, 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 perfect. So now what that means is I need to multiply two times two times two times three. Now remember, I use the dot for multiplication because we're in pre-algebra, algebra now. So pretty soon we're gonna start seeing X as a variable. So you wanna get into the habit of using dots as your multiplication symbol. So now two times two is four, times two is eight, times three is 24. So the least common multiple is gonna be 24. So it will be 24 days before Ben and Isabel exercise on the same day again. All right, so as you can see, I wrote that here, 24 days until Ben and Isabel exercise on the same day again. All right, let's go ahead and check out our next slide. On our next slide, we're looking at greatest common factor problems. Greatest common factor problems may be asking you a couple different things as well. Now I know you see the write this down icon in the top left corner, but I want you to listen as we go over each one first and then you can pause the video and write them down. So a greatest common factor problem may be asking you to split things into smaller sections, so split, smaller sections, to equally distribute two or more sets of items into their largest grouping, and to figure out how many people we can invite, and to arrange something into rows or groups. So those are the types, um, different types of problems that you may see for greatest common factor problems. You can pause the video now really quickly and just jot those four different bullets down and make sure that you label this with GCF problems maybe asking you and then the four bullets. Great, hopefully you got that written down. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at the GCF example. So the GCF example that we have here says that Samantha has two pieces of cloth. One piece is 72 inches wide and the other piece is 90 inches wide. She wants to cut both pieces into strips of equal width that are as wide as possible. How wide should she cut the strips? So we're gonna ask ourselves those three key questions again. What do I know? What do I need to find out? And what's my plan? So on the next slide, you're gonna see that. Again, you're not writing any of this down. This is just a brief how-to video so that you can be really great in your activity and you're able to determine um, which one, which problem, which type of problem each activity is asking you for. So what do you know? Well, you know that the pieces of cloth are 72 and 90 inches wide. What do you need to find out? You need to find out how wide she should cut the strips so that they are the largest possible equal widths. And now here's the plan. This is the important part as well. This problem can be solved using greatest common factor, but you know that it's greatest common factor because we're cutting or dividing, that is that word for factor, um, into smaller pieces and they all have to be the same width. That's why they said equal widths up here and they want the widest, that means greatest. So that's how you know that this is a greatest common factor problem. So now you're gonna find the greatest common factor of 72 and 90. So I'm gonna use the same method I used before, the ladder method, and I'm gonna do it right out here to the right. All right, so here I've written 72 and 90, and I'm gonna go ahead and make my first L for the ladder method. Now, um, remember, the first factor I wanna take out um, is gonna be two, so I wanna think about my smallest prime number, so now I need to think, what's 72 divided by two? Well, 70 divided by two is 35, so one extra one is gonna be 36. So now we know that it's gonna be 36. So we've got 36, and then half of 90 is gonna be 45. So now we're gonna make another L, and we're gonna keep pulling numbers out. So can I take two out of both? I can't, because 45 is an odd number, so I know two is not gonna come out of that. But can I take three out? Yes, I can. So then I get 12 and 15, and I'm gonna do another ladder, and I'm gonna look again and see that I can take out three. So then I get four and five here, and I can't divide anything else out of four and five because now we've gotten five down the lowest that it can be. So remember, because we're finding greatest common factor, even though we can use the same method, the ladder method, we only use a part of our ladder now. We don't encompass it all like we did with LCF, we actually only look at the vertical. So we're gonna take a look only at these numbers that are on the up and down right here. So that's gonna be this two, this three, and this three. We're gonna multiply those together. So here we get two times three is six, times three is 18, 
and we're going to finish out that problem by saying each strip should be cut to 18 inches. Now we're just going to take a quick look. You don't need to write any of this down right here. We're just going to take a quick look to see um, if you know how to do it for your turn. So it says pencils come in packages of 18. Erasers that fit on top of the pencils come in packages of 24. What's the smallest number of pencils and erasers that you can buy so each pencil can be matched with an eraser? How many packages of each will you need? So I want you to think about that. And in your composition notebook, I would like you to number numbers 1, 2, and 3. You don't need to write the problem. I just want you to read the questions, so pause the video. And I just want you to jot down whether you think this is an LCM problem or a GCF problem. And then you're all done.